All right. So the last thing we have to do now that the scenario's ended is the upgrade phase. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take back the death curse that her character had. And everybody that has a death token is going to get a death curse card for each death token they have. So we'll go around the board once. Each of my characters gets one. And Nibbles and Scarlet. Nibbles and Scarlet get one. And then Diva gets three more. So, looking at Maya first, she gets a nosebleed. Next encounter, she is minus one health. So what does Nibble get? Nibbles. It's nosebleed. So looking at Diva, what we're going to do with Diva, because she has four, we're going to look at them. <laughs> she has three no curse and one system shock. And if you look at the cards here, which I'll show you in, in just a minute if they start cooperating, they all have a rating. Zero, 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 and two. She takes the one with the highest rating. Which could have been a lot worse. It could have been. It could have been the one that... And because of her oh, system shock, this just takes up a card slot on her inventory. So she'll be able to use one less item next time. And what does Scarlet get? Scarlet gets system shock. So she will have the same thing. Grom gets system shock. Now, a health potion will take care yes. of that? Yes. If you, we find a health post potion, whoever takes the health potion can clear their death curse. Otherwise, the death curse will be cleared at the end of the scenario. Next, we get to go shopping with our gold. Oh, I also trade in these tokens for more gold. So I have a two and a three. So I get five more gold because of those exploration tokens. Now you can only carry one gold over from one scenario to the next. So having all this gold looks cool, but if I don't find anything nifty to buy, it's all kind of wasted. So what we do, we're going to make two piles of six cards. Amy's going to get one, and I'm going to get one. And out of these six cards... Right now, we're just drafting cards we're potentially going to buy. So I got these six. Of these six, I'm going to set to a side. And I got these six. Ooh. I, I, I'm going to keep three. I think that's fair. Yeah, you think so? I'm going to keep these two to move into the next round. You gotta make a decision. I do. So I'm going to take these two for my next round. And then what we do is we swap. We're gonna choose two from those that we just got. Whoa. Yeah, there's some really good choices. So I'm going to keep these two. And then we trade the last two back. I didn't show what I took. So I took these two. And then uh, now we have 
this hand of six cards. From these six cards, we can buy up to three of them using our gold. So I have three, have six, nine, twelve, fifteen gold. So I have fifteen gold to spend amongst three cards. And I have eight gold. And I think I'm putting all my eggs in one basket. I'm getting one thing. Wow. You don't have any zero cost items in there? I do not. And I was tempted. There's there's a, a couple of really good things. Um, this quick shot crossbow is really nice. The decimator axe, which rolls four. And it, it's kind of the upgrade of the bleeder. Rolls four attack and the critical criticals are additional hits. And then crushing gauntlet plus two dice to non-magic melee attacks and this hero but this hero takes a wound. But what I'm going to buy is the amulet of retribution. Uh oh. Each hit canceled by this hero's defense roll deals one wound to the attacker. Wow. So what I'm going to buy, the first thing I'm going to buy, I'm going to spend 3 to buy the Sword Sorrow. That is a melee attack that gives four dice, gives plus one reroll, plus one defense, and one attack per, uh, plus one attack per death token on the hero. And since I appear to be really good at getting death tokens, mm -hmm. next I'm going to spend three more gold to get Life Drain level two. A magic attack that does three ranged attack. Each hit heals one wound from this hero and one close ally. Wow. And finally, I'm going to spend nine, which is everything I have left, to buy Crack of Dawn. It's a level four melee attack that does plus one die against heroes. Now, I also got the Flaming Chain. So here's where I think I'm going to run into a problem. You can only have 12 items. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So I have to get rid of something. My plan was to give Crack of Dawn to Grom, but his cleave only works with swords and axes. That's rough. Well, then I am going to get rid of... I think I have too many attacks. I've got the Rusty Blade, the Sickle, the Last Grim. I guess it's time to get rid of... Man, the Sickle gives me a re-roll. I'm going to get rid of the Sickle. The Sickle's going to go. That's a starting item that comes from the From the Grave set. I'm going to return that to the box, and these are my new... 12 items. Next game, I won't be able to use all 12 items because... Oh no! Maya can have all. Because Maya's thing doesn't take up a space. Unless it says occupies a card slot, it does not occupy a card slot. So the last thing we have to do is we're going to fill out this little sheet that keeps track of who did what. And uh, all that good stuff. And that's it. So, there you have it. That's a full game of uh, that's one of the quests in, in uh, Arcadia Quest. I had heard that the quests in From Beyond the Grave were a little more brutal, and uh, that definitely seems to be the case. This was a little rough. Uh, so if you want to see more, let us know in the comments, and we can continue recording. We're going to be playing this through Halloween. Uh, we're also playing some other Halloween-y games that you'll see on the channel. But if you want to see more of this, let us know, and we'll be sure to keep recording.